usually full-time staff shows up 10 to 5, quarter to 5. Seasonal staff starts showing up anywhere right when we show up or 5 o'clock. We just want everybody out the door on the golf course at 5.15. So that's kind of when we're up and running 5.15. So if people want to get here at 5 o'clock, grab a cup of coffee, you know, talk with the co-workers, figure out their morning jobs. But 5.15, everybody's on the golf course doing their morning job. We're trying to get out right away in the morning, try to get ahead of play, which play, you know, starts at 6.30 on both sides. We have five full-time staff, including myself, and then we've hired 25 seasonal employees, which range from just graduate high school all the way up to retirees. On a typical day, we probably have 18 uh, 22 employees here to work on the championship 18-hole course, and then we also have the par three Academy 9 course. So we have 27 holes out here, and we do need a lot of employees because we have a lot of mowing to do and just a lot of tasks in general. So we basically have two teams, front nine team and a back nine team for greens, tees, fairways, tee service, which is filling divots, emptying the trash, blowing off tees, picking up broken tees. Mowing greens, the schedule is kind of every other day, depending on weather. Um, if it's hot and muggy, and if we're not getting a whole lot of clippings, we might roll for a couple days. It's all weather dependent, a lot of, the, a lot of these uh, mowing schedules and between myself and my, the four other full-time employees, every day before we leave, we sit down, go through the job board for the next day. We brainstorm the five of us and we try to do what's best for the next day you know, on a daily basis. You know, rollers, if, whenever we don't mow greens, the rollers will be out rolling the greens. And, and certain events, we'll, we'll do a mow and a roll. Um, just to kind of maybe get the greens a little quicker, smoother. Hover mowing, we, we do every other week. So at hover mowing, basically the, the steep bunker faces. The, the goal is to not get caught by golfers. So ideally, fairways, tees, and greens, we won't get caught. But if we're hover mowing bunkers or some of these other jobs, yeah, golfers are going to catch the employees and we, you know, we just try to do the best we can to stay out of their way and let them enjoy their, their round of golf. For a busy place like this, we don't want to stress out the greens. We get, we're a full tee sheet every day. There's a decent amount of clippings in the bucket, so that means the greens are really healthy and growing fast right now. We sprayed a growth regulator that will kind of slow down the growth so we won't have to mow as often right now. So a lot of times golfers will see us syringing or hand watering certain spots on the greens. A lot of times the entire green doesn't need water, it's just certain you know, sections of the greens, usually the more of the humps and bumps. So um, if certain parts of the greens don't need water, we're just not going to water the entire green. That's why if you see us with a hose, we're just hitting certain spots on the greens. We know we're not trying to get in your way, but it's just a necessity that uh, just for the health of the plant. We change cups every day for setup. We have six quadrants. As the golfers can see when they're playing, they have a, a kind of a pin sheet. So we have six different days on each green that we go by. You know, every, every day we're cut cups, no matter, you know, sometimes if we only get, if it's kind of a whole rain out day and we get hardly any play, we won't cut cups the next day, but I'd say 95% of the time during the golf season, every day we'll cut cups. Here at Braemar, 
since 2004, Braemar Golf Course has been certified for the Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary Program for golf. Um, so what that is, is we're practicing sustainable management and protecting the environment here where the golf course sits on the land. And one of our goals for this recertification was to build uh, mallard houses. You can see a one little mallard there. We built a dozen of these mallard houses. So every three years, you know, we're just trying to, you know, protect the land with the environment out here and help with the habitat. You know, golf courses are great for wildlife. Um, it's a great habitat. Eat every year, we're, we're trying to do something different out here and even the water quality. When it comes into Braemar and when it leaves Braemar, the goal is for the water to be cleaner when it leaves the property. Every three years, we're just having different goals that we, how we can make the golf course better and how we can help the environment and be more sustainable. 17T, uh, we built that tee two years ago. Well, it was kind of rocky up here. We had buckthorn. It was just kind of a, it just an, it kind of blended in in here. And we were just up here one day, I think it was my assistant, one of my assistants said, you know what, this would be a great tee for hole 17. Great view of the golf course. You can see it like every hole on the back nine. What I love about this job is, and this golf course, I'm, we're always thinking, how can we make the golf course better? And I think with the addition of this tee, we made this hole better. And also for us, it just it reinvigorates our passion for working on a golf course. As being a city-owned public course, I could bet we're probably one of the busiest courses in the Metro. This place, there's never a dull moment here. It, it, it means a lot to me, you know, just hearing the compliments every day from the golfers. It just means the world because between our, the, our entire staff on the maintenance and the entire golf course staff, um, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can to show the best product that we can show on a daily basis. Mm -hmm.